Welcome back to the Solmera Academy. We have been asked to produce a shorter video than 45 minutes to show how to create a package for Windows 10. So let's do this and let's start opening our console. We are back in the software view and the software library of our system and we have focused onto our OS library where we can see the old package from the first video. So we're going to create a new package now. If you want to see a little bit more explanation on these topics, please refer to the, the other video dealing with Windows 10 packaging in our playlist. So, we activate the tab with the software factory and we click onto OS installation. We will start a wizard to create packages for operating system installation and we start using the uh, first step, creating a new OS setup file package. Other than in the first video, I'm gonna create that one now. So I'm using the July version of Windows 10, actually because still uh, DSM 2015.2 will not recognize the out-of-the-box ISO coming from Microsoft with the November update for Windows 10. So I want to create an unattended setup pointing to my DVD drive in my virtual machine here where I have mounted the ISO with the Windows 10 sources. Now the, the wizard reads that DVD and checks it's a Windows 10 64-bit, it's a professional version and it's English. No other languages, no other flavors on this DVD. If you wanted to add other languages or flavors we would have to add the source is manually to our package. So we are fine with that at the moment. We need to select the name for the setup sources package. We click next and then we will have to wait for the copy process to take place. So actually this package will be a copy of the entire DVD. If there was a DVD with multiple flavors, multiple languages and we select only one or two flavors or languages, then the wizard will only copy the files of the selected languages and flavors. Other than that, in this case, it will be an exact copy of the entire DVD as we only have one flavor, one language on that source. So as you can see, the install WIM file is being copied now. And we will just wait for the process to finalize. So we're done, the copying has finished and we will continue with the next step, create a configuration package. So this is the package that will initiate the setup and will provide all the configuration information for the Windows 10 client later. There is only one template at the moment in the system, so we can not select any other templates. We could create our own templates if we wanted to. And again, we will just select Windows 10 package. I need to find another name because that package already exists from from the last video that we produced. So let's continue. We can select the type of the boot environment we want to use. So regardless of a boot environment exists or not, the type will be selected at this point. And again, we will have to provide the information of the organization. The product key, that's something that we can leave empty. Password for the local administrator. An account again for an administrator, so this not necessarily has to be an administrator because the only thing we need to make sure is that this account has the permission to add computers to the domain. And again the hint, uh, you need to make sure that you have no typos neither in the administrator name nor in the password nor in the domain name because in that case there's no double check of the password for example. So this creates the configuration package and the configuration package is actually the only package that we will create beside the setup sources that we will create and that will be visible later on. So 
that's uh, the package that we will see in our OS installation set later. So I'll provide a name. The other fields are just not changeable because these fields have been set during the creation of the setup sources package. I can select a name for my OS installation set. I have my four packages. So this package here, that's the one that I have created. That's the configuration package. The setup sources package is not visible here, so that is used by the configuration package. So there's a link to that package. And partitioning formatting for multiple partitions, client installation, and the post OS package. These packages are basically um, in the system. They have been delivered and installed with DSM on installation time. And so these packages have been there and we just produced that configuration package plus to set up sources. At this point you could add or remove packages from that list. So basically if you have a RAID controller that you need to configure to be able to address or to access the hard drives, then you would like to add a pre-OS action package here before you start partitioning and formatting. In our environment that's fine. So we build our OS installation set now and we're done actually. So that concludes our installation. So I have here my, my new Windows 10 and this is an OS installation set. Should appear sooner or later here. Just refresh the screen. And so this is the package or the set of packages actually that I want to use for ins installing a new Windows 10 client. And uh, we will have uh, these four packages that will be executed in the given order here. So partitioning formatting, then the configuration package that runs the setup, installing the DSM client and doing some cleanup and deleting temporary files. The only thing that we need to make sure is two things. So we need to make sure that um, our wonderful setup sources package runs through a process that's called distribution and I will just trigger that distribution so what we need to do for all new packages in our environment the configuration package the same we need to prepare distribution that will prepare the package and that includes calculating a checksum for that package and for each and every package in the system we need at least once to define if you want to distribute the package to all locations to all depots in our environment or just uh, select the depots or locations where this package should be distributed to. So this is basically what we need to do. And then we will see that in the background we will have a distribution process running. We could uh, right click the package here and check the distribution status. And then we'll see that prepare distribution is running in our work folder. So in fact, there are actually two folders in our depots, one is called work and this is where the work copy of my package is stored and the other folder is called install and this obviously is the location where the installation version of my package is stored and this install folder will be accessed by the clients during installation. So there's a copy process running in the background and uh, we just have to wait for this copy process and later we will be able to install that package. While we're waiting for the distribution, we need to create an installation order. We need to assign that package to a target. And so that's what we're going to do. So we need to find our OS installation set. So this is the package that we want to assign. Right click that package or we could just go down here and activate the tab lifecycle. And we will find the same command here, execute pilot installation. So either one or the other. We execute a pilot installation. This launches the policy wizard, so we create a policy now. That's what we can do as uh, the administrator. And I have a brand new machine that I need to add to my environment first. So I can address these objects in our organizational structure. So I could say all clients and managed users and computers will get a Windows 10 installation. So it doesn't make sense. So we will have to find the client that we want to install. And just to prove that it's really a brand new client, 
I will just show that client to you. So this is a brand new machine here. The only thing that I have added is or modified is that we want to perform a pixie boot as the first boot option. And so the client boots up, runs through the uh, network boot, contacts our OSD proxy. The OSD proxy checks the database, will not find this client in the database, sends back an automated action. That means please send some more information. And then in the background adds this client to our infrastructure. The client will end up by default in the new users and computers domain and will have the MAC address as a name. So I can right click and rename that client new win10 and I can move that client to the managed users and computers domain just by drag and drop and then select move when releasing the mouse button. So now I've got my new Win10 client here. I need to activate that client. So now it's ready for installation. And now I can use this client as a target for my policy. So that's the point where we stopped two minutes ago. So basically, same thing. Go back to the software, to the OS library. Find the OS installation set. Right click, execute pilot installation. Select the target find the new Win10 computer that we just have created and then go through the next steps. We want to install the, the operating system so we select the standard policy and we want to set so maybe we want to modify some settings some parameters here but the preset should be fine so here we find the setup sources package here we find the type of boot environment there will be some partitioning information or selections. The default is uh, one partition that uses the entire hard disk, but we could actually select up to four partitions on one physical hard drive. The passwords that I have entered, the domain and the administrator account, and the other information in here, including time zone and language that I could select, depending on the sources that we use. So that's good to go. We just confirm that, click next and we're done. And the uh, result will be that we have one policy instance created. So I as an administrator can create policies and the policies normally should have uh, groups as a target. And then the BLS, the, the DSM server, will create a so-called policy instance in the background for each and every computer object in that group. So that's everything we need to do. Just one final check on the distribution status and we can see distribution, everything is current and OK, so copying process and everything has been done and we can launch the installation. So let's check that in uh, on the status of the package again. So my new Win10, this is my OS installation set. There's a policy, you can see that little target symbol here, so that marks my policy, new Win10, compliance pending, so there's an action waiting or an action pending, and this is my policy instance, this is pointing to the one computer, it's uh, pending as well, so this basically tells me that there's an installation order pending, so with the next boot that machine should actually install the operating system. So let's try this, just Go back to that new computer and reboot that computer. So it launches again the DHCP, the network boot. It will again receive an automated action. So DHCP forwards to the boot server, to the OSD proxy module in DSM. The OSD proxy checks the database. The database has the information that uh, we have a pending operating system installation. And then the OSD proxy will start sending packages and sending scripts and the first package will be the boot environment so the windows pre-boot pe and uh, with that windows pe we will just boot the machine and start executing the scripts so the first thing that will happen is some communication between the client and the osd proxy module and after that the DSM server will send the first package, which obviously is the partitioning and formatting package. And um, after partitioning and formatting, 
then the server will send the configuration package that will then initiate the setup routine and perform the entire unattended setup. So let's just wait. Setup is starting. Uh, I assume that you have seen uh, Windows 7 or Windows 8 or Windows 10 installation before. So we don't need for that progress to uh, finish and we can just stop at this point. I will just pause the video and return to you when the installation will be done. Well, some minutes later <coughs> we'll see that uh, the installation has been finished and uh, we can try to log on to that machine. So the good news is that joining the domain obviously was successful. So we can sign into the Solmera education domain and I will just check user with the password and looks like it works and we can launch that machine. So this is the very first boot as you can see. So we can see all these wonderful welcome messages from Windows 10. And this finally concludes our short video about packaging. So I think this was less than 20 minutes or so to create a Windows 10 setup, assuming that you have prepared the boot environment and you have the sources available. So <coughs> thanks for watching again. And uh, I think this is the fastest one that you can get for packaging. So stay tuned. Hope to see you soon.